This is Straight No Chaser Talk Radio. We're just getting started. Straight No Chaser Talk Radio. He's drinking that with no chaser. This is Straight No Chaser Talk Radio. We're just getting started. Straight No Chaser Talk Radio. He's drinking that with no chaser. Just getting started. Straight No Chaser Talk Radio. He's drinking that with no chaser. Good evening, good evening, folks. How are you doing? It is good to be with you here on Straight No Chaser. This is Thin Bad and the Chief. Hello. We're with you. And uh Ann Beasy, Pastor C, and all those folks. Everybody's out and about. Uh, there is so much going on. And when I say out and about, you know, we're all clamped in and closed in, but out and about in the inside way. Uh, but <laughs> as we see though, there's so much going on. Unless you've been uh un- you can't even be under a rock and not know what is happening uh in the world. Um you know, there have been pandemics before, uh, and there have been race relation issues before, but there has, I don't think there's ever been a time when there's been both at the same time. Uh, the world is definitely changing and spinning faster in some ways. In other ways, it's, it's exactly the same, which is part of the problem. And why tonight we're talking about enough is enough with the killing of uh George Floyd and all the protests that are happening all across the nation. We've got some folks in today to, to talk about it from all different types of, uh, uh, all different vantage points. We've got Shannon Banks. She's a 25-year uh, veteran of Clark County School System. She's at the South Aca- Academic Academy. Tyrone Powers, Powers Consulting Group. I'm just going to sit back and listen because it's going to it's going to just roll tonight. And later on, joining us, we've got uh, Craig Knight, who's the manager of Power 88 FM uh, in Las Vegas, and Ambezi is with us. So good to see Ambezi in the his house. Man, oh man. I'm this happy the, to be this, back. This is the it's best like a part of my reunion. This is the best part of my whole quarantine. Be <laughs> <laughs> and busy in the house. That is good. That is good. I, I, I look. I need all the reason I can to smile. Um, yes. I always try to find something funny somewhere, and there is nothing funny anywhere um, at, at this point. I mean, people are riled up, and rightfully so. Um, this is. Enough is enough. Uh, too much is too much. And, um, you know, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back uh, is, is, has, has fallen and there's upheaval, upheaval all over the place to the point where, on the one hand, you've got people trying to deal with uh, the issues of the pandemic. And, you know, we've been talking about here on, on Straight No Chaser, we've been talking about uh, how it's important to stay in and what you've got to do. But, you know, Sometimes there's things that are happening where folks are like, you know what? Some of the young folks in particular are like, I'll take my chance with coronavirus over the police. Uh, and it's gotten to be that bad. Uh, and that's a, that's a statement in and of itself. Uh, Chief, what, are, what, do you, what do you make of what's going on as, as, we, uh, as we lean into this? Well, I tell you, Thin Bad, you know, this, this whole situation has really um, been just something to watch you know you've watched the protests going every night you've watched the escalation uh on behalf of the the guy in dc and you but you've also seen a a kindred spirit because if you think about this with the of course the underlying issue is is what happened to mr floyd but if you think about this thing has touched a nerve so much that people are willing to protest in the middle of a pandemic that tells you that this matter is very serious. And not and it wasn't just black people you saw outside. 
It was white people, men, women of, of all ages on the spectrum. So it, it's just, um, it, it was um, very overwhelming to see. Uh, it, there were some sad moments. I saw uh, the, the, the child's mother of Mr. Floyd's uh, baby girl talking about uh, how her daughter's not going to have a father, and that moved a lot of people, including me, almost to tears. And, you know, just this whole episode has just pulled back a Band-Aid off the wound that has not healed yet in terms of how people are perceiving their treatment uh, from law enforcement. And we have to say that there are tons of great officers out there that are doing an incredible job. And this has only made it that much more difficult for those officers that are out there trying to make a difference in the communities. They're trying to establish partnerships and and the like. But this situation was just, it was just egregious. It was unnecessary. And it really put a stain on all of those officers that swore an oath to protect the community. And Beezy, what do you what do you what do you think? You know, this is the good part about having us uh, as a uh, uh, we are the old folks, you know? <laughs> and, and and to hear your uh, your your take on it, your generation take. Yes. I mean, I'm hearing it in my you know, my my daughter is about to be 21. She's mm-hmm. already she is ready to go hit riled the, up. She is riled up and ready. She is she is doing spoken words. She's posting things on mm-hmm. that she's not before and. It's, it, you know, when you're watching it, you're like, whoa, this is yeah. something. This is a moment. Well, uh, the first thing I want to say is I think that um, our generation has finally gotten to prove ourselves because so many times they talked about millennials and Gen Z as the generation who just sits and complains. But now, now that you're looking at these front lines, we're the main ones out there. Um, however, it was very, and I don't really know how much Uh, My parents know that this talk affected me, but um, what really did it for me was the the second time I went out to protest was when they had, um, when it was down at Container Park. And before I left, my parents had to prepare me to go and they were just telling me about, at first it was just about coronavirus, like, oh, make sure you have your mask on, all this kind of stuff. And then it got real. It was like, you know, don't bring your ID. If they gas you, this is what you do. But what really got to me was um, my mom made a comment and she was actually tell- telling me about how involved my grandfather was in civil rights. Mm. And uh, my grandfather actually donated to Angela Davis's uh, defense fund. Like he was really deep in there. But the one thing that she said that kind of moved me was, it's crazy that I have to, it's crazy that your dad and I have to prepare you to go out and fight for the same thing I watched my dad fight for. That was um, crazy to me because where's the progress? You know, we saw, we talk about Martin Luther King and we we saw their marches and all that kind of stuff. Now, granted, there has been progress because that was in the Jim Crow era. So they were just fighting for basic equality at that point. But the fact that it's like generations later, we still have to go out here and protest. That's pretty crazy. Um, The second thing is going out to these protests have been interesting. Um, There, the one thing that I have as as a critique for what's going on is we are having problems staying on one agenda. So when you go to these protests, it's like everybody's there because of George Floyd, of course, but with what purpose? Are you trying to change legislature? Are you trying to talk to somebody in the community? Like, where are we marching? Um, And that the fact that everybody's not on one accord is what makes it so easy for infiltrators to come in and cause chaos. Because when you have one group of peaceful people in one area and then they're in scattered areas, it's very easy to cause confusion. I feel like if everybody was kind of on the same page, and which you're starting to see more of because now, you know, the one thing is we're very social media savvy. So we've caught on to, okay, like when I was out in Container Park, we saw three cars full of um, Nazis actually pull, pull up in like 1940 style Hitler vehicles. 
and um, we didn't even see where they parked, but I kid you not, 30 minutes later, chaos ensued. So they probably, you know, finessed their way into the crowd somewhere and started causing chaos. Um, there was looting and all that kind of stuff downtown in Container Park. But now moving forward, everybody is kind of like spreading the word like, hey, don't go to this protest because we don't know what agenda they have. Hey, don't go to this protest. We don't know who's organizing it. So, but it's just insane because... You know, you go through high school, you go through college, and you don't plan for protesting, um, especially in the middle of the pandemic. And so it's, it's definitely been an interesting experience. It's been a learning experience. I personally am done protesting. Um, I'm I'm taking more of a back uh, behind the scenes role now. I, I'm working with members of the community to kind of get together and figure out how we can move forward, um, get into the right people, with um, changes in legislature and um, just trying to start a new community policing initiative, doing things like that. Because at the end of the day, yes, we absolutely do need those people on the front lines who are showing strength in numbers. But then once people start listening, we need a list of things that we are, are going for. We can't just, they, they can't just stand out there and protest and then they finally listen and they're like, okay, we see y'all, what do y'all want? And then nobody knows. So um, that's that's kind of what's happening. But it's like you said, it's like you look up and it, there's all these new things happening. Actually, uh, the state of Nevada just released like new rules about protesting and rallies and all these things that you can't have on you, like down to like a purse. Like you can't even have a purse with, like now they're putting out rules and as much as I understand why, because we did have an officer who, who was shot uh, in the back of his head, and, and it was just terrible. It should have never happened. I don't condone that at all. So I understand why they're trying to take these safety measures, because they're not trying to tell people not to protest, but at the same time, if you are going to protest. But at the end of the day, we do live in Vegas. It's a hundred over 100 degrees, and they're saying no coolers, no this, no that. So what that actually leaves room for is more police encounters because we were already starting to see cases where, I mean, like the two college students in Atlanta, they were just in their car trying to go get some food. Like they weren't even a part, they, I mean, they weren't even doing anything. And those officers busted in their cars, dragged them out and tased them. So it's like, um, of course, during these protests, you've been seeing really fortunate encounters because I've seen police officers who are, have been talking with the community members and, and even marching with them at some point. But on the other hand, uh, they're so on edge, they're kind of just going for anything. So to, to put these rules on top of that, it's like, okay, now, even if you have a purse, you're a target. So it's, it's um, there's a lot going on. And I'm trying to stay current and I'm trying to be a voice because like I said, even though I've personally chosen not to do any more protests, I'm still trying to keep my friends informed who are out there on the front lines. But this is just, it's a lot going on for sure. Shannon, how, you know, you, you see a lot of, of young, young folks um, and their, their parents and things like that before we go to before we go to Dr. Powers, how, what what um what do you what are you feeling? What are you sensing? How are, how are they handling all this? Well, with everything going on with the pandemic, I really haven't been in touch with my students, so I really can't say what's going on with them. Um, being a parent, it's it's hard. You know, my daughter is going through the academy to be a marshal. So I worry about her being out there on the front line, you know, and then I have a son and to, you know, he's watching TV, seeing what's going on. It's, it's very difficult, you know, right. I can imagine what my students are going through. Mm. Right. Doc Powers. Yes, sir. Enlightened. What, I mean, what do you, what, what, do you, how does this, just continually, you know, going. I know there's been some changes. I know that they've changed uh, some of, you know, uh, Ambezi brought up a good point about, you know, how do you know when this ends, um, you know, when this is over. But I think things may change somewhat. I mean, usually we would see what would happen 
the officers would may be charged, but they'd always get off or something like that, uh, or usually get off. But here, I think they just, uh, when I first, I had.